uh, this evening we have something very, very special for you. Uh, we're going to talk about the crop walk, which is coming up. And uh, we will tell you more about it, and uh, which will be on October the 18th. And uh, we'll tell you more about that part, too. But I would like to introduce my guests for this evening. Uh, we have Rebecca Ball, and she's the regional director. And uh, Carol Brandyberry, she's our new regional director. So we want to give her all the support we can. So uh, perhaps we could get started with you, Rebecca, uh, Rebecca a little bit. Um, what is the history of CROP, and what does it stand for? CROP is a national humanitarian aid effort that benefits people globally, not only in the United States, but around the world. The history crop this year is 51 years old. Last year we celebrated that big 5-0. Um, this year, 51 years old. Crop began following World War II when a group of Midwestern farmers who out of their own faith and own commitment to following the call of God to feed the hungry, witnessed the famine that was taking place in Europe and Asia that followed World War II, and they wanted to do something about it. They wanted to have some positive impact. So they began to organize trains of grain. And the trains would stop in one farming community, and the farmers in that community would fill several of the cars with grain from their fields, and then send the trains on down to the next farming community, where they'd be filled with grain. More cars would be filled with grain, and eventually, that grain was shipped to Asia and Europe and really helped mitigate some of the effects of the severe famine that was being experienced there. Well, this happened in the United States then? Right, Midwestern farmers really wanted to, out of their faith, really wanted to respond to the needs of the world. And so that's how CROP began. And CROP originally stood for Christian Rural Overseas Program because it was Christian farmers who, from rural parts of the United States, who responded to needs overseas. Now, of course, CROP is so much broader than that. It's really an ecumenical and interfaith effort, and it's also no longer primarily rural. It's very much urban, suburban, and rural, of, with people of faith responding to the needs of, um, needs of hunger in over 74 countries around the world. So we still call it CROP, but we don't uh, really call it the Christian Rural Overseas Program much anymore. Well, and also, isn't it, uh, they've changed their procedures a little bit more too. Instead of just food, they show them how to grow crops and things like that to of teach them? Yes, that's right. We don't only send food, and um, of course we don't have trains of grain anymore. Crop funds that are used to um, provide food and emergency needs and also some training for people are raised primarily through community-wide walks, like what you have here in Peters Township, where people um, come on a Sunday afternoon and walk, and before the walk, they collect money for the hungry, bring that walk with them, that money with them the day of the walk, and the money is used then to sometimes buy food, sometimes to provide training so people can grow their own food, sometimes to provide seed for people so mm -hmm. that they may, they're prepared to plant. Well, Carol, perhaps you could tell us a little bit of something about what we're going to do. I was going to say our own walk here in Peters Township is uh, 14 years old this year. And not only do we collect money and walk for the hungry, but we also have a little entry fee when you walk, and that is a canned good, which we provide to uh, two of the food pantries in the area, the Peters Township Food Pantry and the Cannonsburg Food Pantry. So we, we kind of double-fisted try and help the hungry here. Mm -hmm. And in our own walk, uh, last year we had over 200 walkers. We raised over uh, $8,000, some of which goes to the food pantries. Um, it's a, a real community effort. It involves all the churches in the area and a lot of people. We have a board of directors, but more than that, we have a lot of good volunteers. The ladies in the church bake cookies and... Um, man the center so that we have refreshments when we come back because we're all starving and thirsty by then. But other than being um, a great ecumenical uh, effort for the hungry, it's also a real fellowship thing, an ecumenical fellowship thing, because you get to talking with your um, fellow walkers and uh, we, we have little bets on which church is going to raise money. And this year we're going to have a clown and we're going to be videotaped, so it's really kind of an exciting thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
sounds like we're going to really have fun. Yes. <laughs> Were you going to say something, Rebecca? I was going to say, Carol really touched on something important about crop walks. There aren't many things that we do as people of faith where we come together across denominational lines and sometimes across faith lines because we have walks where um, the Muslim community walks and the Baha'i community walks and the Jewish community walks. We come together and we come together across economic lines quite often, but we come together and then we look outside ourselves. Mm -hmm. We look at the needs of our sisters and brothers, not just across the street, but around the world. And that's really um, a way to pull a community together in ways that we don't very often do. We don't do that many times. You know, another thing that um, occurs to me is why we walk at all. And uh, Rebecca had pointed out to us uh, at our meeting that we walk because they walk. Most of the hungry people in this world must walk to get food where we go to the grocery store and then put it in the kitchen and before long it becomes dinner they have to walk they have to make a real effort to feed themselves so that's the idea of a walk we walk because they walk because they walk yeah mm -hmm. that's a very good thought mm -hmm. uh, how many crop walks are there in the united states and in the, and especially in pennsylvania there are over two thousand walks in the united states now Two thousand. Two thousand walks. <laughs> and in Pennsylvania alone, there are over 240 walks. Oh, wow. Mm. So um, annually, crop rocks raise an incredible amount of money to care for the hungry. It, nationally, crop rocks raise about $22 million oh. that goes to fighting the hungry at home and around the globe. Mm -hmm. uh, that's amazing. In Pennsylvania, last year, we, in western Pennsylvania alone, we saw about a 20% increase in the money that was raised in crop walks and in the number of people who walked last year. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important for two reasons. One, it means that less people went to bed hungry. You know, that very practical. More people were fed mm -hmm. because of that. Right. And secondly, I think that's a real statement of faith. I think it's a statement of faith for the churches and the synagogues and the organizations that walk that says something about where their heart is and that their eyes and their hearts are open to the needs of their sisters and brothers. So I'm really excited about th that for crop mm -hmm. walk and excited this area had a really wonderful, Carol can talk about that, a wonderful increase in participation last yeah, year. We did, we, we had quite a few people. It's an easy way for you to help. It, we all wonder what can we personally do about world hunger. This is just such an easy and fun, small way that we yeah. could each help. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of um, the fellow participants here in the area realize that. Well, and, and we I grow think too grow. that uh, they come to meet one another and yeah. they come mm -hmm. to greet each other and uh, from different parts of, well, right around the community here. Yeah. That. Uh, Say, oh, I saw you last year. So, hey, we're back again. <laughs> we also have a great team of uh, regulars, we call them, uh, principally Bob Latimer, who is our arrangements chairperson. He just, he gets everything ready for the past decade, approximately, mm -hmm. and we owe him a great deal of thanks. He's always there for us. He's guiding us along, making sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. Well, there's a lot more behind the scenes to be done before the walk oh, itself than uh, just and the walk. We have a wonderful treasurer who's very capable, and she's doing a lot of advertising for us. Her name is Mary Jean Neighbors. And you, of course, trying to get us um, on, on this program and all that you do to contribute. Well, I enjoy doing it. Yeah, I think, well, that's I think we all thing. do. We all do. We all do, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what makes it so so nice mm -hmm. and so very important that people, just like ordinary people, I mean, we all participate and we try to do our best to help somebody. That's right. And that's, uh, um, okay, now, where does the money donated through Crop Walk go? I, or did we touch on that or not? I don't think we did a little bit, but... I did Can say that some more? of it uh, stays here locally in the Peters Township and the Cannonsburg Food Pantries. Um, the money that we raise helps the food pantries through the lean months in the summer when the um, 
collections and all, or maybe not like they would like them to be. Especially we still have Thanksgiving the hungry. and Christmas. Right. <laughs> we still have the hungry who go on. Mm -hmm. And these funds help us to continue to feed. Well, I think mm -hmm. we're uh, doing 50-some families here in yes, Peters are. Township mm -hmm. alone, so, which, is, which is a lot of people. It is. I regularly have um, food pantries and Meals on Wheels programs tell me that there would be months that they would not be able to provide the food that they provide if it wasn't for the money that came to them from their local crop walks. Mm -hmm. In the summer, giving often drops off to local food agencies. Christmas and Thanksgiving, people are, tend to be a little bit more sensitive to the needs of the hungry, and so those are months when they can count on having enough. But in the summer, no, people aren't talking about the needs of the hungry in their community. So the crop walks really cover those bases, mm -hmm. those, those lean months for many different communities. Well, are crop walks usually held in the fall then? Is that when they usually are? Or do they have them all, all year round in other places? Or? In Pennsylvania, probably 90% of our crop walks take place from the last week of September until the last week of October. And then the other 10% take place in May. May. Now, of course, that differs mm -hmm. in Florida. They try to get theirs in well, in early I lived spring. Well, in New Jersey for 16 years, and we did ours in October as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, let me see what I want to ask you next. Uh, uh, what are some of the hot spots in the world today where crop walk money is making a difference? And what do you mean by hot spots? Um, hot spots, I would say, are places where there's a great need right now, where hunger and poverty are um, being acutely felt, and how church, how crop walk funds really help to benefit that. That, um, I would say, in the United States, we have discussed uh, a survey was done of the College of Mayors at the beginning of 1998, asking them about the needs of their hungry in their cities for 1997. And they reported a 16% increase in requests from food pantries in 1997. Mm -hmm. When they were asked if they thought that would continue for 1998, they, their assumption was that the need would not only, that it would grow at least at a 16% increase. So I would consider one of the hot spots would be some of the urban areas of this country mm -hmm. where hunger is um, really being experienced in greater numbers. Then on a global level, one of the ways crop walk funds fight hunger is in situations of disaster. So for instance, in the Sudan, where 1.2 million to estimates range to 2.3 million people are in danger of immediate starvation, crop walk, walk funds have, have bought 1,500 metric tons of emergency food supplies that have been sent to the Sudan. They've also bought almost 500 metric tons of seeds that are being planted now for harvest. So when I say hot spots, I would say it's situations like that where the need is great. Another example of that kind of situation would be in Nairobi where the American embassy was bombed. What, what we know about the family structure in, in Nairobi is that for every breadwinner, that represents 20 or 30 people in an extended family that that one breadwinner is responsible for feeding. Wow. And so for each person that was killed in that bombing or injured in such a way that they couldn't work, that represents a whole society of people that immediately were plunged into dire economic straits. So, so it's crop not walk only funds. One person. That's mean, right, it's, it's not uh, one person. It's, a, it's 20 to 30 extended mm. family members. So crop walk funds are able to provide immediate aid in a situation like that, immediate food and immediate um, maybe vocational training so that another person can step into that breach and begin to be a breadwinner mm -hmm. for that extended family. I wonder if you could tell Irma and uh, our audience the, the statistics you were talking about, the rice that um, the third world people get as opposed to what we eat. The comparison. Sure, sure. I thought that was very mm. interesting. Americans spend a billion dollars a day on food. A day. A day. A billion a day. dollars a day on food. In the developing world, uh, for many of the people in the developing world, the nutritional equivalent um, of food that they eat each day would be equivalent to two ounces of rice. That's about a half a cup of rice. 
So it might not be rice specifically, but the amount of nutrition they're getting a day for many people is two ounces of rice or a half a cup. The average person in the United States eats five, the equivalent of five pounds of rice a day. Five pounds? <laughs> so if you could set a five pound bag of rice on this table and set right next to it a half two a cup ounces. of rice or oh two my. ounces, you would see the difference in the kind of uh, availability of adequate nutrition that we have compared to many people in the developing world. In North Korea, the North Korean, who's on, North Korea is undergoing a very severe famine and the doors are closed, so it's very hard to get a real handle on it. But what we do know is that the government has cut the daily ration of rice for the North Korean population to one ounce of rice a day. It's a quarter of a cup. It's a quarter of That's a cup. That's in incredible. And they're to survive on that then. And whatever else they can manage in terms of subsistence yeah. farming. You really don't realize how fortunate we really, really, really are. In I think so. that's one of the reasons that uh, we walk in the crop walk, a recognition of the gifts God has given us and, and our ability to share, just mm -hmm. our health. Right. As opposed to those people who aren't getting enough food. Mm -hmm. That's really some. <laughs> there is some good news in terms of global poverty and hunger. Ten years ago, 26% of the global population would be considered malnourished or undernourished. And now, ten years later, 20% of the global population is considered malnourished or undernourished. So that's a 6% reduction globally. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that represents a lot of people. The global population is about 5.2 billion people. So that's a significant number of people. And that's due in large part to efforts of um, people like the people in Peters Township who participate mm -hmm. in the crop walk, who have raised awareness of hunger and who've actually raised funds to fight hunger. Yeah, I was going to ask you if uh, crop has made a headway. So you gave me the answer already. Not just crop, but um, Is that organ for organizations across the board. The United Nations has a very active hunger fighting program. Um, many denominations have an active hunger fighting program. Mm -hmm. um, Lutheran World Relief and Catholic Relief Services and Jewish Joint Distribution Committee. Together, a lot of good people who have um, really focused outside themselves and on the needs of sisters and brothers have made a huge difference. And well, those numbers show you just what our little afternoon walk can do. Can do. Mm -hmm. That blister you get on the back of your foot. It's very <laughs> small price to pay. Yes, definitely. Uh -huh. um, there is much need in our country, both in the area of disaster relief and the area of hunger. Uh, what does Church World Service do to address these concerns and needs? Do either of you want to comment on that? Well, other than, um, as Rebecca said, the disaster assistance when um, horrible things happen, and they are there with food and uh, training and all. There's also Meals on Wheels, which the Crop Walks helps to fund, and the food pantries, as we've discussed already. Mm -hmm. Can you add a little more to that, Rebecca? Just from Crop Walks alone, $3 million goes to local food programs in the United States. Um, that makes us, that's a significant sum of money. In addition to that $3 million, Church World Service, which is the sponsoring agency for crop walks, um, places 50% uh, of all of its resources are used to fight hunger in the United States. And we might do that in times of disaster, such as the recent wildfires in Florida. Those fires affected the most vulnerable in those communities. They were predominantly rural wildfires, and so people who lived rurally in trailers and shacks out in the countryside had everything they owned um, taken away from them in a matter of minutes. So Church World Service works with um, the most vulnerable in a community like that who've been affected by a disaster. Mm -hmm. So we would, we would give them emergency food and begin to help um, them get themselves back on their feet. We also do some long-term economic development work in the United States. That's the old adage, give someone a fish, mm -hmm. they eat for a day, give them a fishing pole or teach them to fish and they eat for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the majority of money raised in crop walks is used in development programs like that to help people on their feet 
and to um, encourage long-term economic and social security. So that's, um, we do that in the United States and around the world. That's wonderful to hear that, you know, we do take care of our own here too, because there is a need and uh, more than we want well, to admit. Like you the, said, the, right mm -hmm. in our own community. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, now here's the big one. How can I participate? Well, first get on your walking shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, see any of us to get a sponsor form. Then you go out and ask your friends and relatives to sponsor you up to a dollar amount uh, for your walk. And the walk is on Sunday, the uh, October 18th at Arrowhead mm -hmm. Trail in Peters Township. You mm -hmm. bring a canned good and we'll go off a walk. Mm -hmm. It's a, a five-mile walk, and we start at 1.15. It generally takes between an hour and a half and two hours. And don't forget those cookies at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the cookies, they come from the different churches? Yes, and that, uh, that, they, uh, um, people from the different church congregations bring cookies. And as I said, we have people who volunteer and sit there and uh, make sure the cookies are ready for us when we come back. And mm -hmm. there's water and juice and fruit. Yeah, I know uh, one year I was helping with the cookies. There were so many, but they didn't go to waste. They gave them to the food bank. That's right. And that, so mm -hmm. nothing goes to waste. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, and here's hoping that everybody is on the weather committee so uh, that, we yeah. have, uh, that, we have a, <laughs> that we have a great day. And like you said, we're going to have Benny the Clown, yeah. and he's going mm -hmm. to, uh, to spur us on and to... Uh, be something new this year. We've never had a clown before. That's right. We have a clown so, leading us. Yeah. <laughs> so, is there anything else you would like to uh, say, or uh, um, uh, Carol? Do you know how much we brought in last year? I know or? it was over eight thousand dollars. I don't, unfortunately, have the exact amount right with me. So that's pretty good for a small township, really. Well, if you if your company has a matching funds program. That's a, that's a real nice thing. A lot of companies will match whatever you personally can mm -hmm. raise. And we did have some people do that. Yeah, so Rebecca, do you have anything else you would like to add? I just am really grateful for this community for 14 years of faithful walking and the kind of difference that you've been able to make in the lives of people right here, um, your neighbors and also people in over 74 countries and I thank you for that. If anybody wants to walk in the crop walk and is not exactly sure how to get more information, if you call 1-888-CWS-CROP, we'll get you all the information you need to to participate in the Peters Township Crop Walk. Mm -hmm. Would you mind repeating that phone number again? 1-888-CWS-CROP. Okay, we'll put that on the screen so that they can see that. Right. and uh, that. Uh, so that we can, uh, everybody can see it. They won't have any excuse of not That's saying right. they didn't know about <laughs> it. <laughs> so, well, I'd like to thank my guest this evening, uh, Rebecca Ball and uh, Carol Brandyberry. And uh, well, all I can say is I hope we see you all at the Crop Walk on October the 18th at 1.15. We forgot to mention it was at Center Presbyterian Church. That's where we're going So to that's meet. where we're meeting. And uh, so see you all there. This is Irma Grego from Senior Perspective.